Hi everyone and welcome. I'm really glad you're here with me today. I had a special request to make a vegan bar and there are a hundred different ways to do that. But I thought, why not make a quinoa milk soap? I don't know why this had not occurred to me before. I've drank quinoa milk before, and actually the process that I do here at the beginning is how I would make it to drink or to use in recipes, and it just never occurred to me. I don't do it anymore because, well, once I found out I was a type 2 diabetic, I had to cut most carbs out of my life, so quinoa is not part of my diet anymore. As a matter of fact, when I'm done with this, uh, a big portion of this quinoa will be fed to my chickens who just love cooked quinoa. Anyway, <laughs> let's get back to it. To use this in the soap, of course, I'm going to cook the quinoa because if you just put uh, the quinoa in water and made a milk, in a blender or something, you would have all those hard little bits and pieces that actually would be very rough on the skin. And so you want to cook it first because what this does is it softens that outer hole and makes it very translucent and completely mushy and soft. And it's really a very simple process. You bring it to a boil. Once you've brought it to a boil, you're going to cover it, uh, turn it down to low for about 15 minutes, and what that does, it allows the quinoa to absorb all that water. And I'm using one part, uh, excuse me, two parts water to one part quinoa. And I'm making a rather large batch here because I want to save some back for another recipe, but for this one, uh, you're going to see that's a great big pan. That is a four-quart uh, pot there, and it's completely filled with quinoa now. And I used a multicolor quinoa because I just thought that the appearance of the soap would be so much prettier than just using white or, you know, a single color. And by using this blend, I just love uh, the appearance that it's going to give the overall so now this step that I'm taking now is actually how I would make the milk but I there's one step that I'm leaving out uh, that won't be in the video because I'm not doing it for making soap like I would do for, if I were going to be drinking this after this process of adding the water to it and blending it, I would then sieve it through a couple of nut bags and just to get the pure clean milk. But for this soap, actually, I want you to see the quinoa in the soap, so I'm only running it through a sieve, not through the nut bag. It's because I want some of those little bits and pieces to actually show up in the soap. Um, why hide the ingredient, right? And I think it really does work. And you do get some mild exfoliation from this, because after all, um, it is a rough blend, so, but it's not sharp. It is just sort of a bumpy kind of exfoliation, so very mild. And that's one of the great things about using different botanicals and food items and things like this, whether it be seeds or roots or whatever, is that you can experiment all sorts of different ways and try different things. Some things are going to work. Some things are going to fail. Matter of fact, I had a big fail that I don't have on film of a soap I was making, and I cut it way too soon. It was hard on the outside, and I cut it, and the inside was just jelly. <laughs> when I cut it, the inside kind of just bled out. Because I cut it far too soon, I got ahead of myself. I was just in a soap making craze and was making a couple of different soaps and just got impatient and overconfident. So it's one I'm having to cut up and make into a hot process soap, which is fine. It'll make a wonderful soap. It's something different. Anyway, back to the quinoa soap. So 
Once I filtered it there through the sieve, I'm now putting it in ice trays and going to uh, freeze it so that it doesn't burn when we add the sodium hydroxide, the lye, to the quinoa milk. And no, this isn't truly a milk. It's more what I would call a quinoa slurry, sure. Because, like I said, I'm letting a lot of those little bits and pieces come through. I just screened out the larger pieces, but a lot of those little tiny itty bitty pieces. I just love how this looks. Uh, it reminds me of an almond scrub that I've made. Uh, and I just like that look a lot. And to be able to translate that into a soap is just something that excites me. I just, there is something in my mind that uh, just reacts very positively to sing botanicals in soap. Now, that being said, I'm not a fan of putting botanicals on top of soaps like orange slices and things like that, but only because uh, those things can get wet and they are not in the soap, so they're not getting the benefit of the high pH of the soap to keep them from molding. So you can end up with mold on the outside of these items on top of your soaps and things, and I just don't think that's attractive, nor is it healthy. So. That's the only reason why I don't do that sort of thing. Just wanted to be clear on that. I have done it in the past. And if it's just a decorative thing you're going to sit in the bathroom just to look at, which I don't think is what soap is for, but I know there are people that like it just as a decorative item in their bathroom. Then an orange slice or whatever botanical you decide to put on top is up to you. But anyway, that being said, uh, <laughs> I did melt this very slowly. And one of the great things about this is that it kept its color throughout. Um, I was very happy with that. It kept this sort of golden hue of the quinoa uh, syrup. It darkened some, right? It did yellow more, but it reverts back in the soap. But it just, it didn't burn because it never got above, I never got this above 75 degrees, so there was no burning of the uh, material. And as you can see, it did take a little bit of time. I took this very slow while I was uh, mixing it because I wanted to treat the material with the respect that it deserves. If you go too quickly with these things, you can make mistakes. However, mistakes are the foundation of a lot of wonderful creations, right? So, one of the wonderful things about soap making is that, for me, it allows me an outlet. Um, I've discussed this in other videos, but sometimes I do get depressed. I have a personality and a background that makes me a little more susceptible to depression on occasion. But nothing can take me out of that faster than creating. And actually, the person who asked me to make this soap, uh, I sent this video to, or part of this video, this part actually of the video already. And she was so happy with it, so impressed that I, someone took the effort of doing all of this to create this specific soap for her um, that was vegan. And that made me feel wonderful. If I had been depressed, that would have been just what I needed. And that is why I think a lot of people do soaping. Not just because they like to make stuff, not just because they are creative, not just because they are need to make an income. I think that a lot of people do it for the joy of bringing joy to others, of bringing a smile to someone else, of bringing um, a positive reaction from others. That's a very selfish thing in many ways, and I can admit I'm selfish in that way. I love when someone says, this product helped my husband's knee condition. This 
product. My daughter just loves this product I gave to my mother-in-law, who now likes me because of that, right? That means so much to me. I don't have people around me. I don't have family near me. I don't have friends. I have some acquaintances around, but I, I don't have a lot of people around. And I take such joy from complete strangers who share these things with me. And once someone shares something like that with me, I don't feel like they're a stranger anymore. Now, that may sound a little wacky, but I feel a closeness to my customers. When they share something like that, when they come to me and say, this has helped me with my eczema or this has helped me with my psoriasis, because I can't make those claims. Uh, matter of fact, Etsy has some very specific rules about that. Um, and I have been called out on some of those things before. Uh, but they can't say a thing about what my customers say about the products, right? And so when people say these things or they either share it either in feedback or they send me an email or they call me or whatever the case may be and they let me know how these things have helped them, or how much they appreciate it, or how much, you know, they like it. Gosh, that is so important to me. And I do feel closer to people. And you know what? Even when people complain, when something doesn't work well for them, I love to hear that because it's good for me to know, oh, this thing didn't work for this person. Why did that not work for them? And I'll ask a lot of questions depending on what it is, you know? I mean... I had a customer recently who complained about the way the tallow smelled. And I kindly stated, well, that's how it smells. And, you know, I don't guarantee tallow based on its smell. I can assure you it's not rancid, that that's just its natural smell. And they actually asked for a refund, and so I gave them the refund. I just, sometimes it's less stressful just to do that than it is to go back and forth. Although I will do that uh, sometimes too. If I'm in the right and I feel someone's trying to get something over on me, of course I will fight it. But this wasn't one of those cases, and so I gave them the refund. And then they later sent me an email and said how much they apologized, that they... Apparently, they let someone else smell it who said that's just the way tallow smells. And they felt bad about it and wrote me back. But they had the um, good manners to actually write back and say, you know what, I was mistaken. And that's okay. They made a mistake. So what? <laughs> we all make mistakes, right? But I feel closer to that person because, first of all, they made a mistake and then they realized they'd made that mistake and admitted it. That's a hard thing to do, but it made me feel good about people. Anyway, I, I'm going on about that. So I'm using Alkanet Root and Matter Root to color this. And I did sort of a high pour to get it down in the bottom real good. And then I'm going to follow that up by pouring more of the base color in just to push those colors down even further. I just want to make sure that the colors go all the way down through the soap because it's going to be overwhelmingly covered in the little quinoa color of the seeds, right? So there has to be something to differentiate it. And I just thought these two colors would do that rather subtly, uh, subtly, subtly, yeah. <laughs> and... That was the, the whole purpose of using these. And they are very, very subtle indeed. And uh, one of the things that I will share with you when using natural colorants, do make sure that you gel it you, to get the best color. In this case, I did not gel this. Normally I do, but I was working on several other things, and I did cover this and set it aside, but I didn't force gel, meaning I didn't put it in a warm oven, and I didn't cover it in blankets or anything. So it looks the way it looks, but it doesn't um, have the richer colors that you would get if you put it through gel. So as you can see here, those bars did lighten up quite a bit the outer part and 
I will tell you that I cut this a little soon. Yep, I was on a tear of doing things too quickly uh, <laughs> over these last few days that I made these so this soap and another one. So I had to wiggle it a bit here to get a bar out at first, and then after I got the first one out, the rest of it worked pretty well. But what I wanted to say is that if you are using natural colorants, I strongly suggest that you do force gel by covering it, by blanketing it, insulating it, putting it in a styrofoam cooler, whatever works for you. But I really liked the subtleness of the colors, though. Um, there you can see sort of the purpley pinks of the colors and but again, as you can see, you know, the seeds are all throughout the bar. They're from top to bottom. They're in all three of the colors and the base color and the alkanet and the uh, matter root. But I really think that it adds to the overall appeal of them. And I like them. And what's even more important is that the person that I made them for was terribly pleased because she wanted a mildly exfoliating vegan soap. And that's this soap. The oils in this are all vegan. There's no tallow in these. As a matter of fact, I do use different uh, containers for my vegan stuff and for my... Uh, tallow by non-vegan stuff so that the two don't cross or get uh, I don't uh, cross contaminate now I do use the same soap cutter okay but I use a stainless steel soap cutter which I do sterilize in between uses with very hot water and wash it with soap and water and then use alcohol on it so that wherever possible I do use stainless steel only for that purpose so that there isn't that problem with self con with uh, cross contamination, which you could get with plastics, right? So, hope you enjoyed these. I did have fun putting this together. Experiment yourself. Try different things. It's a lot of fun. Um, you know, whether you're using almond milk or soy milk, it's easy to make yourself, um, and you can, if nothing else, you get some fun label appeal. Uh, you know, there will be people who will purchase it because, you know what, it's made with a milk that's not an animal. And for some people, that means a lot, right? They Maybe they do want something a little richer, but they, you know, more than just water um, or aloe vera. So by adding something along these lines, you're giving them a little bit more luxury, and I do think these are quite luxurious. They're filled with wonderful oils and butters and essential oils of rosemary and peppermint and all natural colorants and natural exfoliation. Gosh, what's better than that? You know, one of the things I would like to say also just to all of you, is that I know I have not been good at responding to comments in my videos. I want to, I really do. I just have had so little time in between making things, and you will notice I've been doing more making recently. I've uh, been trying to release more content. Uh, but orders have been just phenomenal, which I'm not complaining about. That's a good thing. But it also means I don't have as much time to do other things like responding to comments and videos. And so I am working on that, uh, on trying to work out a way that I could do that, like maybe devote time. I don't know how other people do it. Uh, I'm you know, there, I, it's just something I've got to work out because I know that my viewership has dropped off quite substantially. Uh, and I think a lot of that's because I have been so busy with doing other things. It never occurred to me that when I quit my full-time job and started doing this full-time that this would really be full-time, that it would take quite as much time as it does because it was just a part-time thing before when I had a full-time job and now making this my full-time thing, it does leave little time for anything else.
Thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate you. Please have a wonderful day, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.